All right, so I've been thinking about getting a new vehicle lately for the company so me and John can go and do our separate things. And one of the vehicles I considered was a Sprinter because we have a Sprinter. This is not it, ours is in the shop. This is a loaner because we had a recall on ours for the airbag. But this is the high roof version. I could stand up in here and I'll show you that here in a minute. But ours is the low roof version. Now, the bad thing about this van and the one that we have, the lower roof version, catches a lot of wind. So when you're driving and it's a real windy day out on the open highway and you get a gust of wind, you can actually feel that and it will actually pull you to the side of the road a little bit. And since we drive so much doing our job, it's kind of annoying. And it's kind of one of the things that made me think I would never get another Sprinter. But there's always a trade-off. Since it's so high, you have all that room where you can stand up and then store so many tools. You can really organize this thing and really go crazy with it. So that's one thing I've kind of dreamed about was just getting a Sprinter and just decking it out, like putting every tool in there and having like almost like a little mobile shop. Now, another thing I've been thinking about is the Chevy Express and the Ford E-Series cargo vans. Those are both vans that I have used in the past. I actually owned a Ford E-Series cargo van, a 99 one, and it has really bad uh, fuel mileage versus this. This is a diesel engine. And it's on ours, I don't know, I haven't really drove this much, but on ours we get 22, 24 miles per gallon on this big vehicle. So that's something else we got to take into consideration. What with as many miles as we drive, that's a lot of money spent on fuel. Because on my Ford E-Series van, I think I was getting like maybe 13 miles per gallon. So this gets double that. So it's double the fuel cost, which is why we'll go around here and look at my truck that you guys have seen, which is why I went to a diesel truck. One of the reasons, I've always kind of wanted a diesel truck, always in the back of my mind but this one has a tuner on it. I didn't do any of the tuning on it. It already came like that. And it gets 22 to 24 miles per gallon. Two diesel, diesel engines, our Sprinter and my truck, they get 22 to 24 miles per gallon, which I don't really know if there's a work gasoline vehicle that can really beat that. So that's why I've always liked using diesel engines, just because the fuel economy on them. So I'm standing here between a truck and a van. And the bad thing about the truck is the storage space where you can store things. My bed has the bed cover on it. It's the ARE bed cover. And it's mainly on there just to protect things from getting wet. Because the stuff we use, the tools, the materials, they can't get wet. If they get wet, they're pretty much trash. So I'm able to slide plywood in there, miter saw, whatever will fit and close the bed on there. But obviously it's only eight foot long and like five and a half feet wide and you know this tall however tall this is and there's not a lot of storage space in that that's why i took my back seats out and uh store a bunch of tools back there so i can maximize the carrying capacity of that now with something like this obviously there's way more space and i'll go ahead and open this now ours isn't this fancy this thing will just open I think they, when they give you a loaner car, I think they give you like a way better one. So you'll want to like trade yours in and get into more debt. Yeah. So, <laughs> so watch this, this is pretty cool. I can stand up in here and I can't do that in our Sprinter van. You know, I'm, always, I'm just like a little bit bent over in ours, but in here would be so cool. It would be, it, it's something I've always dreamed about was just taking a whole wall like this, putting like some kind of shelving unit in it and it's just storing everything. Nails, nail guns, tools, caulking, uh, nail filler, sandpaper, sanding discs, blades. Just having like a little mini Home Depot tool section slash paint section, cause you know, we do all the painting stuff too. And just having it stored here, that way I don't have to go run to Home Depot and get something or run to Sherwin-Williams and get some masking tape or whatever. Just, there's plenty of room for that here. Um, so that's the trade-off. When you're getting that, all that wind resistance, you're getting all this space. 
and you've got to ask yourself and i've got to ask myself because i'm going to be purchasing a vehicle what do i want more and that's just something i'm going to have to decide but in the cargo version of these sprinters these windows are not here i think you only have the windows in the back and then the window in the sliding door now if you imagine none of these seats in here because this is the passenger version and and the cargo version wouldn't have this ac unit as well but that's a lot of space you take all these seats out i mean there's this is like a rolling mobile workshop now people have said you know get a trailer but the problem with the trailer is i live in hoa i, I can't even have a, a trailer here i can't have my boat parked in the the driveway it's not allowed and the houses they're when we go park in front of a house to work, it's, it's almost hard to find a parking spot because the way they make the houses so close together, that can be annoying. So I would really like to have a trailer, but at the same time, it's not really feasible at this moment in life where I live and it seems to be kind of annoying too. And with the trailer, you're gonna lose that fuel economy too. You're gonna be, anytime I'm pulling, even with that diesel truck, when I'm pulling a trailer, it drops the, the fuel economy by a lot. And as much as I drive, that's gonna add up to a lot of um, money lost just in overhead fuel expenses that are kind of unnecessary for what I do. You know, I'm not a general contractor that has all these tools for every trade. I just need carpentry and painting tools and I can fit plenty of those tools in a vehicle like this. I've been doing it out of my truck for the past five years now. I think I've had that truck four or five years. So. This is just kind of the stuff that's going through my head. Now, one thing on this, this van here, again, they, they give you the more upgraded ones. So you'll be like, man, I want to have all this nice stuff. This looks way nicer than ours, but I really don't care about all this fancy stuff, but this is pretty cool. You can just push, put your foot on the brake. And then this has a push to start. But one thing about this, when you're driving, and I'm a fast lane driver. I drive in the left lane and I believe that if you're in the left lane and someone comes up behind you, you need to move over because the left lane is for passing only in the state of Texas. And I go to Oklahoma sometimes and have seen the same thing. I'm sure it's the same all over the place. But that being said, this thing will only go to 82 miles per hour. And it's probably a safety issue where they don't want you you know, going 90 miles per hour in this big vehicle and then it gets top heavy or whatever. I don't know all the the uh, reasoning behind it, but nevertheless, it has a speed limiter at 82 miles per hour. That can be removed by hacking into the ECM and all that, voiding warranties, whatever. I'm not really interested in that. So that's another thing I gotta ask myself. Do I wanna be limited at 82 miles per hour? You might be saying, like, why would you even be driving that fast? Well, down here, there's these express lanes that are off the highways and you gotta pay for them, they're toll roads. And you can either go down the road on the interstate for free, or you can get on the express lane, pass all the traffic and pay like five or 10 bucks, depending on how far you go each time. It really adds up, but time is money. So it's probably better to just take the toll road in the express lane. And in that express lane, people are driving 85, 90 miles per hour and 82 is really not going to keep up and it can be frustrating. And I don't like driving slow. Not that 82 is slow, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. So one other vehicle that I have thought about was the Chevy Express, which is kind of what I'm leaning towards just based off price. And there's so many of them out there. Like I said earlier, the Ford E-Series cargo vans. And then one I thought about was the Ram ProMaster, which is kind of like, uh, like a Sprinter. It has a Sprinter look to it. I know you guys will know what I'm talking about. But every time I've seen one, it's like people are driving like really cramped up like this. And like, it looks like there's not a lot of leg room. It might be something I just need to go to a Ram dealership and test drive one, but you know, I'm gonna to try to find a used vehicle. But those are really the only vans I'm looking at. Sprinter, Chevy Express, and Ford E-Series cargo vans. So let me know what you guys think. I'm probably gonna be buying a vehicle um, within the next month. And I've already got the loan 
I just gotta find one at the right price, with the right miles, the right color, which is gonna be white, <laughs> and um, just the right fit. I don't think I'll be going wrong between either one. One thing I will say though, with these Mercedes vans, since we have our Sprinter, what? What do you want to do? I want you to install the crown molding for me. Please repeat. Okay, this person's getting fired. See, this is just high tech. Um, you made me lose my train of thought. What would you like to do? I would like for you to be quiet. Wow, <laughs> it listened, okay. All right, it listened. Um, what was I even saying? Oh, on these vans, I'm not gonna say her name because she might wake up. They're very expensive to work on. And we found that out the hard way because I had to get my brakes changed on our Sprinter and we were gonna get like an oil change and Mercedes quoted us like 800 bucks. And I just pretty much was like, okay, well, uh, I guess I'll let you go and just hung up the phone. And I changed the brakes. I think they were like 50 bucks for the brake pads and everything. So if you can work on it yourself, you could probably save some money, but just know that there's special tools, there's special things they gotta do. The, okay, here's a weird thing that Mercedes does. The battery, I'm pretty sure it's the same on this one. The battery for the Sprinter, and we know because our battery died and we've had a lot of problems with batteries, is right here under your feet. It's a sealed battery, so it doesn't leak out acid in the cab but it's, it's right under here and it's very annoying to get to when you gotta jump it. I know that there's a jump connection under the hood, but trust me, when your battery is as dead as ours has been, it does not work. It doesn't get a good enough connection off the jumper cables. So if you find a solid van that'll run, these diesel vans will run for hundreds of thousands of miles. My diesel truck just hit 318, I think, and it's, has no sign of stopping. That's kind of where I'm at. Chevy Express and Ford don't make diesels that they do, but they're very rare to find. You almost got to order them unless you get lucky and find like a Duramax GMC Savannah. But that's where I'm at. Let me know what you guys think, what van I should buy. I might even take the camera along with me when I do some test drives and give you my thoughts then. But I'm all looking at this from a perspective of work. Like how am I going to make this vehicle, whichever one I get, the most efficient for doing what we do, which is the finished carpentry. I guess that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I know I haven't posted in a little bit, like two weeks, house is going slow, just trying to work and make money to pay for all this stuff. So you know how it is. And I'll see y'all on the next video. Take care. What? Fifty-nine thousand two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Can you pay for yourself? 